Did you know that different voting rule sets can result in different winners? Stick around to watch how the same 100 voters yield three completely different winners depending on which voting rules are used to conduct the vote. To illustrate these rule sets, we'll have three different candidates, Anne, Betty, and Carl, who will be working hard to try and win over our voters. Furthermore, we'll assume that we have 100 voters who are divided into three different voter groups. Voter group one prefers Anne, Betty, and Carl in that order, and we'll assume that there's 37 people in voter group one. Voter group two, well, they like Carl the best, but if they can't have Carl, they like Betty, and they like Anne the least. We'll assume that there's 33 people in this group. And then in voter group three, this will be people who like Betty the most, Carl second most, and they like Anne the least. There's 30 voters in voter group three. Now let's look at our first voting rule set, a plurality vote. A plurality vote is a fancy name for the voting rules most of us think of when we say, let's hold a vote. In a plurality vote, everybody votes for their favorite candidate and the candidate with the most votes wins. In this case, voter group one will vote for Anne, everybody in voter group two will vote for Carl, and everybody in voter group three will vote for Betty. We count up all the votes, see that Anne has the most votes at 37, and Anne is declared the winner. The advantage of a plurality vote is that it is simple to understand and the quickest to administer. A disadvantage is that it doesn't take into account what people's preference order is. For any given voter, you know who their favorite is, but you don't know who their least favorite is. Under this rule set, it's strategically advantageous to be loved by some, even if it means you're hated by others. The second rule set we're going to look at today is called instant runoff. In modern politics, this is commonly referred to as rank choice voting. In instant runoff, voters have the opportunity to rank their candidates, providing a preference order. Then, multiple rounds of voting are done in which the candidate with the least votes each round is eliminated just like the TV show Survivor. The instant part of the instant runoff name comes from the fact that the rounds of voting can all be performed instantly since the preference order of each voter is known. Let's simulate an instant runoff now. In the first round, everybody votes for their favorite candidate just like the plurality vote. Then, we eliminate the person with the least number of votes, in this case, Betty, with only 30 votes. We then set up a second round of voting, but this time, Betty is removed from the candidate pool. Voters choose between Anne and Carl. After everybody votes, we tally up the results of round two, and Carl wins with 63 votes. Carl is the winner of an instant runoff vote, even though it was run on the exact same population as our plurality vote. An advantage of instant runoff is that you can better capture the preference order of different candidates. Disadvantages are that it can be more logistically difficult to run, and a candidate who is everybody's second choice but nobody's first choice could be quickly eliminated in the first round. The third rule set we're looking at today is known as a board account. In a board account, voters rank the candidates and a point value is assigned to each candidate based on everyone's preference order. In our example, imagine that voters in group one assign three points to Anne, two points to Betty, and one point to Carl. All the other groups assign three, two, and one points according to their preference schedule as well. We'll grab our 100 voters, and first we'll have all of them assign three points to their favorite candidate. Voter group one each give three points to Anne. Everybody in voter group two gives Carl three points each, and everybody in group three gives Betty three points. Next, we'll have them give two points to their second favorite candidate. So group one gives two points to Betty, group two does the same since Betty is their second choice as well, and voter group three gives two points to Carl. We add all of these points to the running totals. Finally, everybody gives one point to their third pick. In this case, that's Carl for group one, and all the voters in groups two and three give one point to Anne, since Anne is the third pick for the voters in both of those groups. By the way, if you're learning something new from this video, please consider sharing it with somebody else who's also interested in game theory, voting, or learning new things in general. 
So we add all these new values to the running total and we have our result. Betty is the winner with 230 points following our Borda count vote. The advantage of Borda count is that it best captures compromise candidates in which everybody's second choice might actually be the best candidate. A disadvantage is that it requires voters to rank all of the candidates, even if they don't know all of the candidates that are running. And there you have it, three different voting rule sets resulting in three different winners. With the same population, we have Anne as the winner of the plurality vote, Carl is the winner of an instant runoff vote, and Betty is the winner of a border count vote. Let me know in the comments if you are as amazed as me.